video games are entertainment first and foremost. That is their main purpose, that is why they were created. Yet, they do have quite a lot of applications in the field of education simply because of what they are. They are interactive by nature. They presume that you will try and learn how to play them and that way you will understand something. Now that something can be either its mechanics, which will not always be translatable into the real world as a skill or as something useful that you may actually use, but sometimes it will be, even if it's something as simple as a physics puzzle being resolved in the same way that it would be in real life, or if it's facts about some historical figures, or geography, and yet video games quite often fail spectacularly, and I mean stupendously, magnificently, awesomely, at teaching people one very, very important core component of real life. Something without which we're doomed to failure, and not as individuals but as a species. And that thing is common sense. But it wasn't always that. Now sure, in the olden days, because technology was quite limited, you can really make common sense be a thing in video games at every point possible. For example, one of the earliest video games that ever existed, the tennis game on the Magnavox Odyssey, didn't actually have physics attached to the ball. You had to move a different knob to actually manipulate the ball in any way you wanted to, regardless of how you hit it. That goes against common sense. That goes completely against reality, but that was what was possible back then. Fast forward 50 years. Have games improved in terms of common sense. Well, not really. And one of the greatest examples of this is the RPG genre. Anybody that's ever played a computer RPG or a console RPG or any RPG on the electronic system has a very different understanding about what the genre is about compared to somebody that's played it on a tabletop environment in real life with a GM. And what I mean by this is that an actual role-playing game, a real-life pen and paper role-playing game will routinely punish you for not having common sense. And it's the little things that are very important. For example, sleeping in plate armor. You're gonna have the weight of that armor just pushing down on you constantly. You will wake up tired. You cannot even take it off by yourself. You need help. And video games, that doesn't matter. Now, sure, you may say that it's a simplification, it's just something that was taken out because why would you have it there to begin with? It's not fun to get tired if you're wearing plate armor, it's just useless busy work. But at the same time, you do end up quite often in video games where you, a warrior with gigantic armor, will often be able to rest, take a break, just lounge around, regain all your hit points after you got stabbed to death 50 times already, while the enemy is like two meters away on the other side of a door. That is breaking common sense at a level that will get you absolutely murderized in a tabletop game if the GM actually understands the concept of common sense as well. To be fair, most GMs do. Good GMs will emphasize that this is not a video game. That when you go up to an NPC and talk to them, you don't just say, what who, give me a quest. No, you actually have to talk to them. You actually have to discuss things. You have to treat them like they're an actual person. The same thing goes for your enemies. They're, for the most part, unless they're super duper monstrous and don't have any intelligence, they can be talked to, reasoned to, and your environment as well. It's not just there to, I would say, look pretty, but it's all in your imagination because it's a non-visual type of storytelling. It's there for you to interact with in whichever way you think would work. Because in a pen and paper RPG, it will work. Video games are not really like that. One reason that is still valid even 50 years from uh, the tennis game is that technology is not fully there to allow you to create a super duper, incredibly, totally accurate representation of the world. With all its laws, with all its components, we don't even understand some concepts of it, let alone how to emulate them in a video game. But that doesn't mean that people should not try, because that's another reason. People just do not try to add common sense to their video games. And in this way, I'm not just referring to adventure games, because adventure games are notorious for having moon mana logic, where you would have the most absurd combination of items and sequences of events leading to the completion of the simplest puzzle possible. This is one of the 
things usually attributed to the downfall of the popularity of adventure games, at least in Western markets, though it was still kind of... They didn't die out, is what I'm saying. They just weren't the hot thing because of first-person shooters. The thing is that adventure games, even if they do have Moonman logic, can still have their own common sense tied into that logic. For example, the Secret of Monkey Island. One of the core concepts of the game is that your character has infinitely expanding pants in which he can stuff anything, and whatever is down there doesn't seem to take up any space or matter or volume or anything. So when you pick up that idol from the bottom of the ocean and stuff into your pants, and thusly you're no longer tied to it and drowning, it makes a twisted kind of sense. In that world, that is common sense. What the adventure games did after that, well, that's a whole other matter. And it's not just them. It's far from being just them. First person shooters, you know, the ones that replaced in popularity the adventure games a while ago, they're guilty of this pretty much non-stop. Games where you think, oh, I can shoot a light and maybe be a bit harder to see. No, you cannot shoot out lights. Games where you think, oh, the enemy is hiding behind something that looks like it could be easily broken apart. I can just shoot it and then kill them like that. No, you can't. It doesn't do any damage beyond that. Or my favorite, like my absolute personal favorite. Oh, look, this door is locked. How do I open it? A. Do I go around the level looking for a key? B. Do I blow it up with any of my moon-destroying weaponry? C. Do I wait for my teammates to get around the door and open it for me because I don't actually have any agency in this game and if the game glitches out, well, I'm stuck behind the door and will never pass through it? Well, usually it's not the second option. And this is something that modern shooters are really, really guilty of. Whereas the precursor to that genre, well, the precursor to the first person genre in general, Old Underworld, didn't have any issue. That was because Old Underworld was made to be a simulator of the world, of a world. It was meant to have an internal logic that worked, that functioned, that made sense. So when you encountered the door, if you had weapons, you could break down the door even if it was locked. Unless the door was made out of steel and you didn't have anything that could bust down a steel door. The Ultima games in general tried to do their best at conveying the idea that common sense exists and you can use it to your advantage. Yeah, you can combine flour with water and get a dough that you can then bake to make bread. Why not? It's something that added to the believability of the world, to your immersion in that world. And it's gone down the drain quite often in the last couple of years. Couple of exceptions, absolutely there are exceptions. Divinity Original Sin is a great exception. It tries to do a lot of things sort of realistically, even though it doesn't have day and night, and even though it is a game where you can talk to dogs. You will sometimes find the odd game that does try its best to still convey common sense, usually more in the simulator, incredibly complicated, really in-depth, physics-based, basically built for nutjobs that want to spend 100 hours constructing a rocket to get to Duna and back with one stage, and it's a transformer for some reason, you know, stuff like Kerbal Space Program, stuff like that tr still tries a bit to convey common sense, because it's, it's one of their core elements, the simulation of the world. Other games that try to be realistic in what they convey and how they convey it fail completely at it, with example, player knows Battleground. Why can you, as a passenger in a car, cannot drink a uh, energy drink while the car is moving, being driven by somebody else other than you? Heck, you could probably do it while you're driving. It wouldn't be safe, but people are shooting at you, so who cares about safety? Now, you may be saying that I'm asking too much from games that are obviously meant to be just entertainment. And you're right. I mean, some of them, they're, they're not what you would call educational. But them lacking common sense makes them less interesting as games. When it gets to the point that the game actively punishes you for trying to accomplish something in a common sense way, it just becomes a honestly hate-filled journey and not an entertaining romp anymore. And if it sounds like I'm picking on certain games like action games for example, it's mostly because one of the games that really unexpectedly had, well, one of the series that unexpectedly had a lot of common sense in it for no reason was the Metal Gear one. Metal Gear, in spite of it being about nanomachines Sun most of the time, or Metallic Archaea, has an absurd amount of common sense in it. Ideas like your footprints are visible in the snow. If you get into a place that's smelly, that smell may rub off on you and enemies will notice it. If you point a gun at somebody who's not prepared to have a gun shoved in their face, they react like a person that's not prepared to have a gun shoved in their face. They won't instantly shoot you in the face. No, they'll 
react is, oh, okay, you got me, just don't shoot. And these are things that do not have a tutorial. These are things that the game does not teach you because it expects you to understand them already as being something you could have done in real life. In Metal Gear Solid 2, you can see ice cubes melting in real time. And some of them pointed out, I think it was either in one of my videos or in a comment I left on some website, that it's a completely pointless feature, that it doesn't do anything. No, it doesn't. But it's something that they put in there so that the world still makes sense at as many levels as possible. So that when you get to Metal Gear Solid 3 and you start to wonder, hmm, you know, this game's supposed to be realistic. I mean, the series is. What happens if I get stung by so many bees that it nearly kills me but I don't die? Do I become immune to it? Turns out, yes, you become immune to stinger venom. So when the boss shows up that throws bees at you, screw them. They really won't do that much damage to you, I think. I haven't actually got into that part of the game, but that's what I heard people say about the game. Also, uh, turns out smoke works against the bees because it would work against them, or wasps or hornets, whatever they are. It works in real life, so it works in the game too. And you also have that one character that would die if you just fast forwarded the game because he's old, thusly giving you different avenues to fight bosses that you never knew of because the game never told you because maybe it didn't need to because they're kind of common sense, or well, some of them, not the dying of old age bit. It's actually more rewarding this way because you find these things out on your own. You experiment with them and realize, oh, the game actually allows me to do a lot more than a game normally would. Most times a game will give you a quest, a secondary one, for an alternative to how to defeat a boss. You'll get to find a key code, a catchphrase, a password, you know, like a code in um, Deus Ex. So in Deus Ex 2, there was a lot of common sense in there as well. I mean, you're not gonna fight a boss at the pretty fine moment when you're supposed to fight a boss if the boss has been dead since you first met them by some freak accident involving explosives and you were sneaky enough to make sure nobody noticed it was you. It's games like these that are the most fun to play, the most fun to replay, the most entertaining of all. Because what they do the most is they don't punish you for actually trying to do things in ways you think they could work and even may work were the game actually programmed in a way that let you do that. It was simpler back in the old days, because back in the old days you just had text and a very very simplistic graphical representation so you could program most contingencies, the ones that seemed like they were common sense. In modern times, not so much. In modern times you cannot open doors even though you're a super duper soldier armed with, well, biceps that could bench press a continent. Even though we do have the technology to still display all those common sense related options. But they're not there because implementing them takes time and a lot of money. Because, you know, money is time. Making games is not easy. And also, uh, there's one very important fact. A lot of people just don't care. Like, they not, do not give a crap. You think the people that made Medal of Honor the last two gave a crap? Oh, I guarantee you they did not. Like, they, they knew what they were doing. Electronic Arts knew what it was doing. It did not care. So what? I mean, the first Medal of Honor was a really neat game where you could see the enemy's breath and that's where you could see that there was a sniper in the nest somewhere because it was cold outside and you could see steam rising there from the breath. Yeah, screw that. Have a quick time event where you stab somebody or some NPC stabs somebody and it looks cool and you have no actual game because why put effort in there? We're making games for people that are not even paying attention. They're watching Netflix on a second screen, drinking beer, talking on the phone. They're just here to waste time until tomorrow when they have to go to work. That paints a really sad, depressing picture of video games, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe making that FPS podcast reminded me of Medal of Honor and how much that game sucked in the last iteration. And that's why I made this whole thing. It also reminded me of Far Cry. Which Far Cry 2? That game tried its best to make sense. Far Cry 3? Nope. Far Cry 3? Oh, you think you're in an open world? No. You're not. Same with Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. You capture all those fortresses, can you use any of them to defeat any of those super duper turbocharged ships that can turn on a dime for some reason even though they're the size of a planet? No, because if you get near one of your own fortresses, you're out of the mission zone for fighting that ship that's constantly following you for no reason. I think you should care about common sense in video games. At least in those that try and seem like they're more than video games. Those that try and seem like they're grounded because you know, common sense in Doom, why bother? It's Doom. It's about blowing demons up with your face 
common since an RPG, well, that's kind of important. Especially when older games like Ultima Underworld had it. Got yourself locked in prison? Well, here's a 10 foot pole used to flick the switch to the cage. Voila, you're home free. Other games that have the pretense of realism or for authenticity of being more than just Tetris, more than just Pong. Actually, no, th those games did have some common sense to them. They're not doing that great. And again, I should. Because like I said, common sense is something that people need to learn. Something that must be ingrained into everybody's mind or else this species is doomed. Octopuses have common sense. Crows have common sense. Ravens do. Dogs do. Why not video games? And if it sounds like I'm ranting a lot and making no sense, it's because it's quite hot in here today and, and to actually make this audible.com, well not .com but to make the sound audible, I had to turn off the, uh, the fan that's cooling me and the PC. So if this made no sense whatsoever, it's because of the heat. But if it did, and it resonated with you, I want to hear your take about common sense in the comments. I promise I'll read them. I know I promised the same thing last time, I didn't get to it. I will get to it soon, I promise again. Goodbye.